Good morning, parents and students of Grade Nine Walling Walling. This is Ms. Daisy Curadelas. Welcome to our second PTC online meeting. We just finished the first quarter for the school year 2021-2022, and we still have a lot of things to work on. Before we finally proceed to our meeting agenda, let me remind you all of the online meeting etiquette by showing you a video to be followed by the virtual singing of our national anthem and prayer. Mga panuntunan sa pagdalo sa online meeting. I-check ang gadgets. Bago ang pulong, siguraduhing maayos na gumagana ang mic, camera at internet connection. Siguraduhing buong pangalan ang nakalagay sa iyong profile. Wastong lugar at pananamit. Magsuot ng wastong kasuotan at siguraduhing nasa tahimik at maliwanag na lugar habang nagpupulong. Buksan ng kamera. Pagpasok sa meeting room, buksan ang kamera at imute ang mic kung hindi magsasalita. Makinig ng maigi. Makinig ng maigi si nagsasalita at iwasan ang paggawa ng ibang bagay. Magsulat ng notes upang hindi makalimutan ang pinag-usapan. Maging magalang. Kung nais magsalita, maging magalang sa pakipag-usap. Sabihin muna ang pangalan upang makilala ng host. Maari ring gamitin ang chat box para magtanong. Magpaalam kung aalis. Tapusin ang pulong. Kung kinakailangang umalis, huwag kalilimutang magpaalam. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. Dear God, thank you for your great love and for all the blessings and happiness you have bestowed on us. Thank you for bringing us all together today in this virtual room to share and discuss the academic progress and We pray that you send your Holy Spirit to guide us in this undertaking. Lead our hearts and give us the wisdom and the proper words as we work to find what is best for our learners. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas as we seek to work together to ensure that our learners are in the right path. Please help us teachers and parents to always do what is best for our children and to be patient and understanding. Guide us to be role models and supportive adults for them. Give our learners a healthy and happy year filled with growth and learning. Help them to grow in grace and love and to become the best learners that they can be. We ask all of this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the
Once again, welcome to our homeroom parent teacher conference. I am Ms. Daisy Curadelas, advisor of Reading Walling Wally, and also their science teacher. Okay, let me go back to the previous slide for the online meeting etiquette. First, let us enter this virtual room through the link given at least 10 to 15 minutes before the start of the meeting. Mute your microphone in respect to the audience, participants, hosts, and guests. Mute your microphones unless you are called upon. Raise hand. Click the raise hand button if you have a concern you want to raise and wait for the speaker to call you. Dress appropriately. Observe wearing proper attire during the meeting. Stay seated and stay present. Sit up straight. Don't make big extraneous movements and always give your attention to the one speaking during the meeting. Minimize distractions. Avoid rustling papers, eating, or making other distracting noises in the background. For today, we have seven agenda. Number one, we will uh, show you the mission, vision, and core values of DevEd. Number two, we will uh, explain and give you an idea about the learning modality as well as the grading, grading system. Number four, we will uh, discuss about the attendance checking of students during their online classes. Fifth is the teaching learning collabor collaborators. Six is the wins wash in school. Seven is the TVE specialization of your channel. So let's begin with the mission, vision, and core values of DepEd. So the Department of Education has this mission to protect and promote the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based, and complete basic education where students learn in a child-friendly, gender-sensitive, safe, and motivating environment. Teachers facilitate learning and constantly nurture every learner Administrators and staff are stewards of the institution, ensure an enabling and supportive environment for effective learning to happen. Family, community, and other stakeholders are actively engaged and share responsibility for developing lifelong learners. For the deaf vision, we dream of Filipinos who passionately love their country and whose competencies and values enable them to realize their full potential and contribute meaningfully to building the nation. As a learner-centered public institution, the Department of Education continues to improve itself to better service its stakeholders. Our core values, makadios, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. So what is our, or what are the learning modality for this school year? We have modular learning modality, wherein hard copy or printed modules are distributed in schools and where parents or guardians of the students get their copies from, as well as the soft copy. Uh, these are sent in subjects group chat where your child or the guardians can download the file or the images of the modules. We also have um, limited online classes for those students who are capable and who wants to uh, engage in an online class setup. This happens every week and where students meet their subject teachers once per week. For the grading system, so table one, this is the way distribution of the summative assessment components per learning area for grades one to grade 10. So for ESP, uh, for ESP AP and languages, for English, 
they are graded, your, your children are graded 40% for their written works and 60% for their performance task. While in science and math, they are graded 50% for their written works and 50% for their performance task. While in MAPE, EPP, and TLD, your children are graded 30% for the written works and 50% for the performance task. Here is an example of computation of written works and performance tasks in languages A, P, E, S, E for grades 1 to 10 and SHS for senior high school core subjects. Like for example, written works, which is 40% of your child's grade, let's say they have four tasks. So task 1, highest possible score is 20, second task has the possible Highest possible score of 25, third task with uh, 20, highest possible score, and for the fourth task, they have 20 um, highest possible scores, and total is 85. So if your, if your child are, are perfect in their written works, they will get 100% uh, percent for this grade. But that 100% will be multiplied by 40%, then later on for the performance task, this will be added in the 60% um, percentage of your child's perform total performance task score. So let's say, for example, learner A, in task 1, the highest possible score is 20, but learner A got 18 points. For the second task, which is 25 points, learner A got 22 points. And for the third task, 20 points, the highest possible score, but the learner A, but learner A got, uh, yeah, got 20, perfect score. For the fourth task, 20, per, 20 points is the highest possible score, and learner A got 17. Total, 18, 20, 18 plus 22 plus 20 plus 17 is 77. So, 77 over 85. And what is 77 out of, of 85? That is 91%. 91% will be multiplied by 40%. And learner A will have 36.4% grade for the reading works. So, same process goes with the performance task. We will total all the scores scores of learner A and then we will see, we will check if how much of the perfect um, performance test score did learner A got. So example, 12 plus 13 plus 19 plus 15 equals 56 and 56 is a 75% uh, percent of the total highest possible score of 75. So 75, which is the final score of learner A in the performance task, will be multiplied by 60% and the answer is 45%. So 45% plus 36.4% is equal to 81.4. So this is the initial grade, 81.4 for learner A in subjects like languages AP, ESP, and 81.4 will have a transmuted grade of 88%. This will be reflected in your child's um, report card. How about in sciences, math? So same process. So we have the highest possible score on top. Let's say, for example, there are four tasks. And learner A got this score. So total is 77 points over the perfect score of 85. So 77 is a 91% of 85. Okay, so 91% uh, multiplied by 50%, it's 45.5%. So for written works, learner A have 45.5% of grade. And let's say, for example, the performance task of learner A, she or he got uh, 56 total scores over 75. 56 is 75% of 75. 
Now, 75% multiplied by 50% is 37.5%. This uh, fi final uh, grade of learner A in performance task will be added to her or his uh, final grade in the written work. So 45.5% uh, of written works grade plus 37.5% uh, grade in performance task is equals to 83%. This is the initial grade and once it is transmuted, 83% will be 89 and which will be reflected in your child's report card. So same process goes in MAPE EPPTLE. It's just that written works in um, these subjects are 30% of the grade and performance task is 70%. So students need to perform perform more tasks in subjects like MAPE EPPTLE since they will have 70% grade for the performance task. So, I will be showing the grading transmutation table to show you the equivalent of initial grade to the final transmuted grade. So, initial grade will not be reflected in your, in your child's report card, but the transmuted grade. You can freeze or screenshot this table if you want this to be your reference. Okay, for the attendance of students during online classes, personally and in our science online classes, we are using Google Forms to track the attendance of your child, where I will be um, sending them link, attendance uh, link, where they will write their information and
So parents and the members of the family, as well as the friends of the learners and all the teachers, we are all part of the teaching and learning collaborators. So we have to collaborate in order for us to um, help our learners uh, be knowledgeable and for them to survive this um, education despite of the situation of pandemic. Next would be, so as a TLC or teaching learning collaborator, bear in mind that you are not alone in this challenge and that we are all in this together until we succeed in this new normal. Sa Tagalog po, bilang isang TLC or teaching and learning collaborator, iyong isaisip na hindi ka nag-iisa sa hamong ito at tayo ay magkakasama hanggang pagtagumpayan ang bagong normal. Next in our agenda is the winds wash in school. So I will show you the video about what is winds and when it started in education. Quality education requires a healthy and enabling environment. For students to learn, they should have access to clean water, functional toilets, and be able to practice proper hygiene. Poor wash conditions in school make children prone to illness and diarrhea, intestinal worms, and acute respiratory infections. These diseases have serious impact on children's education, leading them to miss school often and affecting their education performance. Access to wash in schools or winds is a right of every child, and schools are responsible in providing a healthy and conducive learning environment. Winds is one of the most basic aspects in ensuring that children are ready for learning. By addressing wash in schools, you are helping to prevent hygiene-related diseases, promote positive behavior and life skills, improve attendance and participation, help them thrive and learn better, promote gender equality, and affirm children's right to health and education. Addressing WASH in schools contributes to reaching national and global objectives. It improves health-seeking behaviors, which contributes to health and nutrition for all. At the same time, to realizing the Philippine government's strategy to accelerate human capital development. At the global level, WASH in schools supports the attainment of two of the sustainable development goals, namely SDG 4, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all, and SDG 6, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. To harness these potentials, the Philippine Department of Education released the Department Order No. 10, Series 2016, titled Policy and Guidelines for the Comprehensive Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene in Schools Program in 2016. The policy established basic requirements and standards on WINS and aims to contribute to achieving learning and health outcomes and improve school attendance. It is the vision of the policy that 1. Water Pupils have access to adequate and safe drinking water. Water is also available in school for hand washing, toilet use, for cleaning purposes, and menstrual hygiene management. 2. Sanitation. School toilets are adequate, clean, functional, gender segregated, safe, and accessible. The school maintains cleanliness and safety, has proper drainage, and ensures safety handling and preparation of food. 3. Hygiene. All students practice supervised group hand washing with soap and toothbrushing with fluoride. Support mechanisms for effective menstrual hygiene management are also in place. 4. Health education. All teachers, school heads, facilities coordinators, and health personnel are oriented on the Dep Ed WINS program. WINS is also discussed during parent-teacher association meetings. All pupils are also aware of correct hygiene and sanitation practices and develop positive health behaviors. 5. Deworming. At least 85% of all students are dewormed semi-annually. 6. Capacity building. All Dep Ed WINS program focal persons are capacitated on the WINS program implementation. However, there is still a wide gap between this vision and the reality for many schools in the country. In order to bridge this gap, an incremental approach to WINS has been developed to help schools improve step by step. This is called the three-star approach. The approach guides and motivates the schools to implement stepwise improvements in their wash conditions. It works by recognizing the achievement of wash milestones with corresponding merit levels. One star, two stars, and three stars. Using only resources available, the school can readily reach the first star level. Reaching the second star would require some form of support from various school stakeholders and external partners. 
a school which has reached the third star means it has met the national standards. How can schools implement the comprehensive person of the WINS TWG and members are the school governing council, education facilities, clinic in charge, canteen manager if applicable, feeding coordinator, representative of CPC, WASH partners, local government units such as Barangay Committee on Health and Education and student representatives. The school WINS TWG will be in charge of steering and managing the WINS program of the school. To begin, the WINS TWG has to be familiar with the Deb Ed WINS three-star approach. The Deaf Ed Wins 3 Star Approach is an integrated monitoring, quality assurance, and recognition system which supports data gathering for knowing the state of Wins implementation against the standards, continuous improvement, Wins planning and budgeting, and performance management and recognition. The Deaf Ed Wins standards are divided into five areas water, sanitation, hygiene, health education, and deworming. There are 40 indicators, each defining a level of implementation that corresponds to one, two, and three stars. Implement the three-star approach is done in five steps preparation self-assessment validation translating results into actions and recognition the first step is preparation the school gathers their wins twg and orients them on a the wins quality indicators and b steps in accomplishing the school wins monitoring form the second step is self-assessment together the school wins twg fills out the printed wins monitoring form this gives the school a chance to inspect the facilities and responses are encoded into the prescribed Excel file, which automatically generates a school report. This becomes and reflect on activities to determine compliance to the WINS policy. Responses are encoded into the prescribed Excel file, which automatically generates a school report. This becomes the basis of the school to plan for improvement. The school submits the accomplished Excel file to the school division via the online WINS monitoring system. A WINS monitoring video is available for the detailed steps on the monitoring process. Third step is validation. The school's division office validates the WINS report of schools through random checks, especially those that registered a three-star rating and those who sustained a three-star level over three years. The validation is done as part of the regular school monitoring and technical assistance activities of the SDO. The fourth step is translating results into action where the schools can use the results for continuous improvement. By applying school-based management principles, schools can address the gaps found in their WINS implementation status. For example, by inclusion in school planning and budgeting mechanisms like the SIP, AIP, and APP. Addressing the gaps can also be considered as a continuous improvement project of the school and may be one of the aspects tackled during Brigada Escuela. Harnessing the support of other stakeholders such as parents and local officials can also help the school address its WINS concerns. There are five WINS booklets available to support you to improve or maintain your gains in the five WINS areas. These learning resources are available to support you in the improvement process. For the division level, the results of the WINS monitoring can be the basis for provision of technical assistance to each school. Schools division offices can also prioritize some common WINS issues and areas in their DEDP, AIP, and APP. The fifth and last step to the three-star approach process is recognition. Schools that improved their WINS condition will receive the following. The citation of appreciation is given to schools for improving their level of WINS implementation. This means that they moved from a lower star level to a higher star level. The certificate of appreciation will be given by the school's division superintendent. The recognition award is given to schools that reach the national standards. This translates to reaching the three star level of WINS implementation. The recognition award will be signed by the regional director. The seal of excellence is awarded to schools that have maintained its three star level for at least three consecutive years. This will be issued by the central office. The comprehensive water sanitation and hygiene in schools policy is DepEd's response to creating a healthy learning environment. The three-star approach is a mechanism for schools to determine the extent of their efforts in reaching the standards indicated in the policy. All this is made possible using the principles of school-based management, the support of the school wins TWG, and a convergence of efforts from the school, division, region, healthcare institutions, and LGU. If you have clean hands and physical ways or other uh, aspects, then our future will be more secure because our hands influence the state of our overall health. Last time I told the students to uh, 
do this hand washing and toothbrush activity at home and i told them to submit the their pictures doing the wins and i sent that as their first performance dance for the second quarter and a lot of students have submitted their works and i appreciate uh the students who did their task and not just for this time but as a hobby at home since we cannot uh, do this in school since it's uh, distance learning in education for the new normal now so here are the example performance tasks of the students so let me show you the tv specialization of the grade 9 walling walling students so i will post the names and their tve and you may check your child's TV specialization and take note of that this uh, has started last grade eight so last year and it will stay the same until grade 10 so your child will not change their TV specialization until grade 10. All right. Next uh, agenda for today is the card viewing. So your your child's um, grades will be viewed later on. Uh, I will just show you the temporary copy of grades. Just kindly wait for your child's uh, name, and you can just screenshot or screen capture your child's grade. So. Paralagad Adrian, Alferes John, Alvarez Ed Mark, Balingasa John Mark, Bayaya John Carlo, Carbon Angelo, Chaver Joseph, Decano John Ray, Deronia James, Dizon Lawrence, Gregorio Dean Gabriel, Ibarbia Zinki, Lamak Jandel, Luistro JR, Luminaria Screen Harvey, Noel Hans Christian, Malia Jan Kevin, Pamero Carl Anthony, Paz Justy, Sampag Greg, Sabre Misana Beiji, Solomon Benedict, Suarez Lumi, Tapang John Rain, Yernis Jerry, and Victor Jan Kevin. For the girls, we have Aposaga Ivy, Akina Tashlin, Burgesser Gajelin, Kanyeda Jermin, Katangay Chris Lay, Patap Shanaya, Citriano Rian, Coral Jasmine, De La Peña Grace, Gavile Venice, Grutas Elaine, Igmasin Dine Kathleen, Jimenez Julie Marie, Lanuso J. Bilin, Makayan Maria Elisa, Mutsayo Jesmi, Maswangat Rika, Miranda April Rose, Mirano Glaisa, Pitogo Valerie, Rivera Jana Ivy, Rongabili Glaisa, Sebuko Bambi Jane, Veran Jamila, and Vinyl and Jamie. I hope that you were able to screenshot the temporary copy of grades of your child. Some are blanks because it means that your child may have not yet uh, uh, submitted their works to their subject teachers. So make sure to coordinate and communicate with your subject teachers. I will try to post this video on my um, YouTube uh, channel. You may visit that and you may uh, subscribe as well to watch and rewatch some important videos. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, you may send your inquiries or questions or concerns on our real time Google Meet. A conference on Friday, uh, 1 p.m. This November 26, 2021. Okay. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.